that he should even speak to me is amazing. And to speak with such civility, to inquire about my family. He has never spoken with such gentleness. Oh, the perverseness of such a meeting. What must he think of me? Perhaps in defiance of everything I am still dear to him? Oh, at this very minute, what is passing through his mind? Where is he? Darcy is following us. Oh. It is such a beautiful place, Mr. Darcy. Delightful, charming. I did not know you were to be here. Mrs. Gardner, Mr. Gardner, Mr. Darcy. My uncle and aunt from Gracechurch Street. You are right to doubt the reign of Elizabeth. The central section was besieged by Cromwell's men and later rebuilt in the same style, but not to my mind with any degree of perfection. It looks well enough to the untrained eye, of course. And Mr. Gardner, you're perhaps an angler. A complete angler? <laughs> Mr. Walton's book is my Bible. While you continue in the neighbourhood, Mr. Gardner, you must do all the fishing you can. I can supply you with any tackle you may need. And Mrs. Gardner, you're not fatigued. The seeing Pemberley is a hard business. But perhaps your niece takes after you. No weather or no walk is too much for her. We have a large party here just arrived, Miss Eliza. What good fortune. I came ahead. You'll be pleased to renew old acquaintance, Mr. Bingley and his sisters and Mr. Hurst. And there is one other member of our party who will more particularly wish to be known to you. Will you allow me, or do I ask too much, to introduce my sister to your acquaintance? Miss Darcy, I should be pleased. I have spoken much of you to her, Miss Eliza. You will all wait upon us, I hope, during your stay at Lambton. Perhaps tomorrow. You are very kind. It is not kindness. It is a pleasure. <laughs> 